I'm going to get started on the dash again today. I'm going to take this uh, completely apart 100% and get this ready for some new uh, white paint. And uh, I broke the the cable to the blend air door for the defrost heat when I was monkeying around under the dash. My my dumpy sweater caught it and pulled it around and just snapped it right off. Um, fortunately, I was able to find an NOS one on eBay for $12. So we've got a new cable coming. And then the, the one of these, let's think this one here. Hang on, let me get it out. Yeah, this one here. This one's for the washer. See how it states washer right on it? And that was originally, looks like it was painted in black in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. And then uh, make sure there's no, I'll probably put it in a couple lacquer thinner to make sure there's nothing in those uh, little things there. Then I'm just going to shoot it with some trim paint. I'll just mask the sides here and that's it, you know, just so I don't get paint all over. And then I'll just take some lacquer thinner and a semi-dry paper towel lacquer thinner so I can wipe the surface without getting it out of the letters. I'll show you how I paint things like that when I when I get to it. And I might do it today, might not. We'll see. Another thing I want to do is I want to give shout outs to my favorite tubers. And I'm going to start giving shout outs a little more often. I watch a lot of other videos and like uh, Junkyard Digs and, and uh, I think Mustang 429. Some of those other ones, uh, they give each other shout outs all the time. They get tons of views on their videos because they do that. It's it's just win-win to do that. So I'm going to start doing it. And if others do it or not, that's up to them. But I'm going to. Um, these, I'm going to just show right here what, uh, there. Sorry about that. I'm trying to reach around here. These are the my favorite tubers. And if you go down to the bottom of my home page, you'll see them and you can click on them and uh, go watch them if you want. But they're all good videos that they put out. And this is looking good. I noticed in the video it looked like there was a bunch of dust in the top here. There isn't. The, the marks you see on there is just dust that's landed on it since it's been sitting here in the, in the garage. It's on the, the dry paint. I don't know if I can... Uh, I can't really hold it and hold the camera and flick it off at the same time. But yeah, it just, just brushes right off. So nothing... Nothing appears to be stuck in it. I mean, there might be a little speck or two in it, but nothing uh, nothing that doesn't just wipe off. So that'll look good in the car once it's in there and the chrome and everything on it. So, you know, I'll clean it all up, make sure it's... It's eventually going to get dust on it, you know, in the car. There's no getting around that. And being black, it's going to show every little speck of dust, too. All right, let me get on the uh, dash. I'm going to let that dry. The longer, the better. And then I'll and I'll just take uh, that paint pen and do these. And I might just take a piece of 600 and just run it up and down all the surfaces. I'm going to paint just once or twice just to kind of give the, the chrome paint a little better surface. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I'll try it because it might need that glossy surface to get that chrome look. And there is some black overspray in here. I'm going to try it first in there when I get ready to do it and just see how it looks. But these pens are pretty, pretty common uh, across the board. You know, you see all these other pens and chrome paints. And really, when it comes right down to it, I've done a lot of research. They're all basically the same. The, this is all warnings and... All that fine print, I took it in, read it with a mag went to read it with a magnifying glass, see if the directions are on there. But it says that uh, you go to, uh, I don't have my magnifying glass, I think it's uh, gpxmarker.com. Does that show up or is it out of focus? It's probably out of focus. But anyway, that's, if you want to do a little research on the pen, I'm going to try on it. These are a couple of ignition switch removal tools. This one does uh, General Motors from the, like the 50s, early 60s, and this is the Ford one. Now the GM one will work on that, but it just doesn't 
it just doesn't fit really well. I mean, you could conceivably use the the GM socket on that, but this is the correct one for this ignition switch. So I'm gonna get that out right now. All right, so this tool, let's see if we can do this on video. It just kinda, you can use a big wrench. There's a couple little flat spots on there. I just use these. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's a large, I'll try and hold it. So there, that just turns it. So you don't, I'm not in the flat spots on my tool anymore. That's probably loose enough to where I can turn it with my fingers. And then I'm going to hold the ignition back because this is spring loaded in the, in the dashboard. See when I let go of it and then I can push it back. So I'm just holding it. And that removes the ignition switch. Needs a little cleaning up, doesn't it? That was a brand spanking new switch. Look at how dirty it is from working on the car. All right, so let me uh, get all the space stuff off, which is just a matter of undoing these nuts. I'll clean this faux wood grain up, and I'm, I'm going to put, all, I got a little baggie here to put all the screws in, so throw them in that box so they don't get mixed up or, or lost. A little metal clip right there I gotta pop off. I don't know if I can pop that off with my finger now. It looks like I'll have to get a little screwdriver. There we go. Not much to that, is there? The cold lens. So I can clean all these. You can see where it's printed on them. I can clean all these up super good why they're out. I got to carefully get this off. I'll probably take that off with the razor blade so I don't uh, tear it. I don't want to damage that and I can clean up. Look at how nasty dirty those are in there. Yeah, they need a good, real good cleaning. All right, let me, uh, let me get this off and get that wiper switch out. And I'm using this, this, and this to take the instrument cluster apart. These are pretty neat, these little, little things right here. You get these at Harbor Freight, quarter, three-eighths, half-drive. I have the quarter and the three-eighths. I mean, they're just handy things to have, like perfect for this, this kind of stuff. You know, anyway, all right, let me uh, go to town here. I took a fresh, sharp razor blade and very carefully cut that adhesive between this and the panel here so I got that off in one piece. I'm going to take this off too but I think I'm going to take the speedometer and the gas gauge out first and they're pretty simple things to take out. I mean uh, let me get the camera pointed at it. It's just a matter of undoing some screws. like plastic sleeves they put on there. There might be, so let me see, I think there's a couple screws in the back here. Yeah, there is. Um, let me get them out right here. Yeah, all I had to do is take those two screws out of the back and then this uh, 
this loosened up so I should be able to just lift it out of here. Looks like I might have to take this piece off to, to clear it and that's got to come off to paint the panel anyway. There we go. Speedometer head. This is for the the, uh, the high beam. That that little thing there. So I'll have to either. I think that's part of foam stuck too by. I'll just mask that because I don't want to mess up that seal there. And uh, but I am going to take all of the. Uh, I got to set this somewhere where it doesn't get buggered up, but you can see now, you know, I can clean that really well. This is the, this is the magnet. So this, I'll show you how these speedometers are pretty darn simple. And I, I really hate the, don't want to set it down anywhere, but this spins. Let me, let me uh, post my, hang on. The way these things work, it's just a magnet that spins around a metal drum. And the faster that that magnet spins, I can't get the needle in there, the more that needle will go up. This drum, see how that's attached to the needle? It's all that does is, and then there's a gear here. Let me show you how the odometer works. There's a gear that runs from, there's like a, a ring gear on here, and then there's a worm gear with a shaft that runs across there to another gear, worm gear there that runs to like a ring gear there that goes over and runs this gear. And that turns this, and then notice these little steel tabs in between. And once these turn, one, this turns one revolution, it'll move this one digit. When that's turned one revolution, it moves that one digit, so on and so forth, down the line. Um, so when I flip these, see this little metal clip right here? You can take that off and literally lift this odometer assembly out, and those numbers will spin freely. And you can clean them all up. you got to be careful you don't rub the letter off, or the number off the, the barrel, but... Yeah, you set it basically the way you want it, drop it back in, make sure everything's in its, see how they have the little metal, I don't know if they show up in there, but there's little metal things. Um, let me get something that I can point with a little better here. There's little metal things right here that sit on this part that hold that digit assembly in place. So you got to arrange your numbers so when those go in back into that metal, they all read what you want them to read. If you don't, then they'll be off. And then you can just set it back in there. You know, this just slides through that hole. You set it back in there, get your pin back in, and put your, your clip back on there. Now look at there, there's a date code on there. Does that show up February... February 7th, 1966. And again, this car rolled off the Mawa, New Jersey assembly line, April 29th, 1969, or 66. So that was made sometime before the car rolled off the line. This, you know, this was, I think the same speedometer was in the 65s also. But um, yeah, just kind of wanted to show what, you know, there, there isn't much to a speedometer. They're easy to service if, um, if uh, you know, they don't work. A lot of times you get noises, okay? So, like, you hear a screeching sound, and the needle does all kinds of crazy things bouncing around and stuff. And you can put a new cable in, and you'll still have it. A lot of times this is what, what needs lubricating. See how that turns this turns and this doesn't so what i do is i like to put some oil right in here to let it soak in a little bit 
and then you have a nice smooth working speedometer and if you can even just a little drop down in there you don't want to get too hog crazy hog wild with, with oils up in here because it'll attract dirt you don't want dirt in there but this the speedometer cable goes over so that stays clean so sometimes i'll even get a little tray of oil and just set the speedometer down in it and let it soak from like here to here here overnight then take it out and let it just sit until it drips out turn it a little bit you know to make sure you've worked it up in there that usually will quiet a noisier wobbling needle you know if your needle's wobbling or this thing's screeching and it's not the speedometer cable if you've lubed your cable and it still does it this is your culprit right here that was the culprit on the catalina i had to take the speedometer out because it would screech like crazy and the needle would drop down and go all over and all i had to do is take it out and lubricate that and it corrected the issue i'm going to take this out too because i don't want to get paint on it and i want to um attach it to the dash or to the speedometer to try and give it some stability so it's you know wherever i set it it doesn't get damaged i might set the speedometer in the house or something until i'm ready for it or if i use the one out of that parts dash i'm waiting for but yeah that just gets that out part number on it there too if it shows up it's c5af-17289-c so I'm going to throw, like I say, throw that back on the speedometer head. All right, so I put the screws in a baggie. I'm going to find some place to set that. That's all Speedo stuff. I use these these little drug baggies to keep parts in. I, I call them drug baggies because I used to get them at the Gibraltar Trade Center when it was open. They had all different kinds of sizes and stuff, and I would go buy them and it was a guy that sold drug paraphernalia and he, he carried all these uh these bags you know and it's like they're amazing for for putting uh parts in like this you know these little ziplocs so i would always go there and buy them just for my my project cars here so these are all held in with with a screw and then they just lift out this needs to come off and go in that bag um that's shorter than the other ones, so you know that goes there. So this, you know, I'll get the rest of this stuff off and we'll get this cleaned up and ready for paint. Looks like the gas gauge, there's one screw up here and one screw down lower. That might fall out of there, I hope not. The screw that is until I get the gauge out of the hole. Okay, that's the fuel gauge and the screws for it, which I'll put with the, with the speedometer stuff, which I'm gonna have to find a nice, definitely gonna put that stuff in the house. I don't want anything to happen to it. So now you can see we're kind of getting down to the bare bones here. I got to get this off and some of those and this and all right, let me get to it here. I do reuse these also. So I'm going to use this one for these bigger ones. That's a little bigger bag. I just keep this in my toolbox and sometimes I order parts or something. They come in a, in a baggie and I just save them because if you restore things like cars and you want to bag your parts and you can write on these with a Sharpie. And still reuse them because when you're done, even months later, you can just take some lacquer thinner on a rag or paper towel or whatever. Just wipe the magic marker writing right off and use it over again. And uh, I use them until they're falling apart. And then I, you know, I mean, you know, these things aren't free. So I try and use them as much as I can. This little part here was right here screwed on like so so i'll uh paint that too when i paint this so this thing's pretty much all down to the bare die cast aluminum i was able to get this little rubber thing off there without damaging it and uh i got all these off you can see they must have put these installed these when the paint was still wet 
<laughs> yeah, assembly line work, that's the way it goes. But look at how yellowed that is. We'll get that all nice and bright white again. I found my storage spot for everything. These, I'm gonna, those blue things, some of them are pretty dirty, but I'll clean them up. But yeah, that's uh, all the parts right there to, to the dash pretty much all, huh? That's crazy, isn't that a lot to it when, when you really break it down, is it? And here's the other pieces. Yeah, it's just not a lot. Heater switch or heater controls are right here. I'm gonna clean them up in the parts washer, but yeah, that's just pretty much all down to, that's ready to, ready to really clean up and put a coat of paint on. That's die cast aluminum or magnesium or pot metal or whatever you want to call it. It's just a die cast metal part. So we're gonna, I, I think I'm gonna just take it down a laundry tub and hose it out and I'll, I'll use some adhesive remover around here and scuff it out with a scuff pad and uh, I'm just gonna use spray can like Rust-Oleum on it. I mean this is all sealed and closed and and uh, it's not to the weather and I don't think it'll I don't think it needs acrylic enamel in there. I think, I think a bright white rust-oleum will work perfect in there. Alright, let me uh let me go wash it. That cleaned up really nice. So that's ready for a quick scuffing and a coat of paint. And I want to note something out here. I don't know if this will show up now or not, but the that actually states February 7, 1966. So this dash was probably put together at another place and shipped to the assembly plant. Um, so there we go. It's, you know, they added the clock, obviously, probably when it was at the assembly plant because the clock was an option in most cars of this era. So, um... Yeah, it cleaned up nice. I cleaned this side all up. It would have been easier to do it outside with the garden hose, but it's cold out and I got the hose blown out and the faucet drained and everything, so I just took it in the laundry tub. But yeah, it's it's not no dirt on it. It'll be nice if I have to do anything to it in the future, not having all that dirt and dust falling down in my eyes if I gotta crawl up under the dash. All right, I'm going to give this a quick scuff and then maybe I'll clean up the heater control and the parts washer. And maybe, I don't know, maybe a separate video for the clock. That might get too long with this video. That is all sanded out and ready for paint. I'm going to mask right here so I don't get any paint over that. What's left that date code? And there's an A1 right there. I might put a little tape over that because I've had these apart on other cars. And these in here, and here were painted white on other cars I've done in, inside of this. And the instrument panel, uh, the idiot lights, when it's out in the sun, you get, they're hard to see. And I think that's why, you know, they're just not bright enough outside. But in the garage or at night, they're, they're fine. You can see some white overspray in the oil light hole and that light was the only one that was really you know had some illuminated you know enough to where you could see it in the daytime was that oil light and I think that's because of the white overspray paint in there so these are all going to be white when I'm done and if they're too bright well I'll just take the front panel off and I can just tone them down with a little other color on a brush or something but I think they'll they'll be fine um so it's been raining all day so if it's dried up outside yet might take this out and shoot some white paint on it and seeing i have this this is what i'm going to use it's uh gloss white and like i say this is not it's it doesn't need you know uh acrylic enamel with hardeners and stuff in this this spray can will be perfect for this um, nice brighten that all up in the instrument panel. You'll be surprised how much brighter the instrument panel lights are just from freshening up the, the white. I mean, look at how different that is. It's 
significantly yellowed and that's enough to make quite a bit of difference and I've learned that over the years you freshen up that white and it brightens them right up yeah it looks pretty good that ought to brighten it up and like I say I folded the tape over because that way you don't end up with a super sharp edge but I just kind of wanted to save those stampings so that's that's good right there that's it for this video. If you like it, hit the like button. It definitely helps. If you like my channel and you want to see this dash eventually go back together and look like new, with new pads and everything, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching my videos.